Hey there and welcome back to my channel. So today I am doing a very exciting video. It has been one that's been in the making for a while now and this is just gonna be part one. So if you guys are interested, I can always do more, but it is my dupe video. And that is gonna be just fragrances from my own collection. Um, Cause I can then, you know, try them on camera for you guys and really get into how much of a dupe they are, how close of a match they are, and which one I would recommend, which one's more expensive, all that jazz. So I do have like hundreds of fragrances, so it goes without saying that there are definitely similarities within some fragrances, some more than others, and then some that just feel like really, really close matches, if not identical. And actually none of these fragrances in this part are fragrances that were designed to be dupes. So, you know, they're not from dupe houses, they're not imitation type fragrances. I can do those as well, but these are all just doubles of fragrances that just happen to be dupes of one another or, because I know people do get sometimes more sensitive about that word, that are very, very similar. So yeah, without further ado, don't forget to subscribe and let's get into it. I'm gonna start with one that is uncanny. Like it is very, very, very close. So that is Madame Eau de Toilette by Jean-Paul Gaultier and Lilac from the 4711 Floral Collection. So these two are incredibly similar. I'm going to try them out right now. I wish I brought scent strips, whatever. We're gonna be smelling a lot of fragrances here today. I got the Madame by Jean-Paul Gaultier first, and I got the Lilac second. I'll also tell you that in case it helps you guys and how much I've had each fragrance, but I will say the time in between me picking up one and the other were very, very, very little. Like it was only a couple months, and I bought both of them blind. Okay. I mean, so similar, you guys. What killed me is I got Jean-Paul Gaultier's Madame first, the Eau de Toilette, and I was so taken by it. I was like, what a beautiful, like, fruity take on a citrus that is so unique. And I remember when I hauled it, I was like, there is nothing in my collection like this. And at the time it was true. But then very shortly afterwards, I got Lilac. And when I was hauling this, I was like, this reminds me of something, it's very unique, but it reminds me of one other thing. And I don't think I remembered it in that video, um, what it was, but maybe in like a second impressions I've mentioned it. But shortly afterwards, I was like, oh my God, I think it's this, and it is. They are very similar. I would say like 90, if we're going by intervals of five, between like 95, yeah, I would say like 95% similar but it, it honestly is closer to being 100. So smelling them next to one another, there is a slight variance, so we'll go with 95, but is that really like 100% worth it? Let's get into what I feel. So the difference I would say is the Lilac by 4711 is just a tad more sharp and a tad, like the smallest bit you could assume more pronounced with some level of citrus. It is not at all citrusy, really. Um, like sweet citrus, yeah, but it's not sharp, but just because of that added slight sharpness, whereas this is kind of creamy all the way through. Yeah, I would say that that is really the, the distinct difference. But in terms of scent, really, so, so, so similar, you guys, 95% at least. And I mean, we can compare bottle-wise. Bottle-wise, I guess it's really just up to taste. I really do like the Madame bottle. I think it's really nice. The, the fluorescent kind of coral pinky orange on the bottom looks as if it's being like lit from within, which I really do think is nice. And I know bottles ma like matter to a lot of people if uh, if they're you know displaying their collection the 4711s are all pretty standard you either like these bottles or you don't they're they're classic kind of apothecary type vibe and i like it it's a beautiful lilac purpley color but i mean it's it's 
pretty common if you have one you have a lot of these bottles like me they're all going to look similar more or less but what i will say is i know that people have been looking for the eau de toilette for a very long time because it's been discontinued and it's harder to find and it does smell distinctly different from the eau de parfum so what i will say because some of you have asked me where i got this or um if i've ever found it online i've never found it online i did find it in person one day which is when i picked it up because i'd heard so many good things but honestly you might have a lot easier of a time finding the lilac from 4711 does it last as long as jean paul gautier madame no um none of the auto clones do however this is one of the ones that lasts longer than my, you know, for my huge 4711 question, it does last a bit longer. And this doesn't last an incredibly long time either. This is in beast mode. So this, while it does have better lasting power, honestly, even for me, as I adore both, had I known they would smell that similar, this is the kind of thing where I would have just kept one. And I probably would have kept this one because it's a, it was a lot more inexpensive. This I got on a good deal, but this was like, I don't even know, like $14 or something. So I would have just gone with the lilac and that is personally what I recommend. Then we go to a very exciting one because again, one's been discontinued and that what I, I feel like this is like really helpful for you guys because one might be really expensive or discontinued and like in the last case, so you can just get that vibe and that scent without breaking the bank or going wild trying to find it. So the second dupe or similar similar duo that I wanna talk about is Gucci Pool Um 2. Huge favorite, cult favorite that Gucci discontinued of course, and simply Jill Sander. So I'm gonna remind myself of this because I do remember it's not as, it's not as close of a match but I remember when I hauled, and I've had the Gucci 2 pour um for a lot longer than uh, the Simply Gel Sander. Both were blind buys, but one was dis the Gucci one was distinctly harder to find and way, way, way more expensive. Um, but we will smell them next to one another to kind of remind oneself. Okay, I take it all back. They are very similar, you guys. So I would say it's maybe 85 to 90% similar. The Gucci 2 pour um has a much more pronounced like black tea and cinnamon. Whereas the Simply Elixir by Jill Sander doesn't have as much of that black tea vibe but definitely still has the cinnamon and spice. So they both have the cinnamon and spice and kind of like woody sweetness. Um, but I would say that this one has more black tea or it just has black tea, which I do like. It has worse lasting power. It really stays pretty close to the skin. It has virtually no sillage um, and this one's stronger and lasts a lot longer on the skin, but it doesn't have that black tea note, which actually is my favorite part of Gucci Tout Pour Homme. And it's a part that I wish was more, I don't know, was like more strong or apparent on my skin. Cause I feel like the cinnamon really does take over on this one on my particular skin. However, this is so hard to find. And if you've been a fan of this one, or if you have someone in your life who's been a fan of it and they can no longer get it. It's like virtually impossible to find. Simply Elixir by Jill Sander is a lot easier to find. It's a lot more inexpensive and it lasts for a better amount of time. I mean, it really is quite similar. You're gonna miss a little bit of that black tea note, but for a fragrance that is so incredibly hard to find, I feel like people are more likely to try to go for something that gives off that vibe and at least brings them close to something that they used to love or that they've always been curious about. So I know a lot of people wonder about getting dupes of Gucci Tout Pour Femme because I also do have that. I have never found something that is 
I have yet to find something that I feel is super, super close. I do have one that maybe I'll talk about, but this I do feel confident saying 85 to 90% there. And you know, the things that are different about the Jill Sander one really aren't that dramatic or horrible where I would say skip out, out, out on it because it really is a good fragrance if you're into that sort of thing. And it does last for a lot longer than the original Gucci. All right, so the next one, I'm actually so mad at myself that I didn't realize it. We're gonna get into the story, but the next one I realized because of one of you and one of your comments, which actually got me excited and on this whole kick to do this video. So that is Blanche by Byredo and Toy 2 by Moschino. This is a strange one because I've had Toy 2 for a lot longer. I got it for a really good deal. It was just in person, not a care in the world kind of purchase. And Blanche, you guys might remember if you've been watching, I picked up relatively recently in the, this year at least. And I've been, it was kind of a purchase where, or was it this year? Anyways, less than a year. Um, it was a purchase where I was so torn whether I should get this or Mojave Ghost because I had samples of both many times and in the end I went with Blanche and I am so mad at myself because of this comment one of you guys left where you told me the similarity I was like there's no way I mean I have it I would have known I smelled this next to each other you guys this is the downfall of having so many fragrances they are so similar and I should have gotten Mojave Ghost and I played myself because this is expensive AF and this is inexpensive AF and honestly I don't need both I like it but I really don't need both so this again is 95 I would say again by intervals of five 95 percent similar and I cannot for the life of me believe it because when I, when I used to smell it, toy, I would be like, oh, there's like a, there's like a plasticiness to it, which there is. And I feel like there is a slight plasticiness to it. And again, a slight sharpness to it. Whereas for Blanche, there is more of like a clean freshness to it and less of that sharpness. That's why, I'll, I mean, I'll leave it at a 95%. I don't think they're a hundred percent identical but they are so so close and the price difference unbelievable bottle wise obviously this in my opinion at least is a lot more classy and nice than the Moschino it has a magnetic cap it's very you know niche and pretty this is for some people probably gaudy or kitschy or whatever it may be but come on I mean how similar are they? And obviously like after a while when I, when you smell them right next to one another, you can pick up the sharpness of this and the fruity plasticiness of this compared to the cleanness, like I mentioned, but it really does last a pretty good amount of time. And it feels slightly oily on the skin, which is always a kind of a good sign in my book where I'm like, okay, this might not always, but it might last a, a relatively long time. And I never have any performance issues with Byredo on me personally. I know so many people do, but I'm just being honest. This, Bal d'Afrique, any of the samples I've tried, they always last well on me. I mean, medium kind of, so I can't fault it for that reason. But if you find that you like Blanche and it just doesn't have that lasting power or you don't want to break the bank, Toy 2 by Moschino is ridiculously similar. And I hate myself because I should have gotten Mojave Ghost because I don't think I own a dupe of that one, in which case it would have really been the better purchase for me. But here we are. I guess I'm really just going to have to wear those two a lot to kind of get through the juice. Um, but yeah, would definitely recommend. They are very similar. <clears throat> then we're going to move on to one that was actually surprising to me. So the first one was Casimir by Chopin. And the second one is Taylor by Taylor Swift. 
I had this one for longer than I've had this one. This is a fragrance for you guys who've been watching me, you know. This is a fragrance that my mom wore growing up. It's very nostalgic for me. She still has her original bottle that has like, vintage bottle that has, I don't know, 10, 15 sprays left. I bought a tester last year sometime, I think. Um, just to always keep. I don't really wear it that often, but I just never want to not have this um, in my collection. So then I decided relatively recently, again, sometime this year, to pick up Taylor when it got really, really inexpensive. I'd never owned a Taylor Swift fragrance before, but all her Wonderstruck ones or her Enchanted ones, whatever they're called, were not my jam when I've smelled them in the past. So I just thought I would never get a Taylor Swift fragrance. Um, whoever did her scents really just did her dirty and they should let me do them because there's such selling potential there, but she needs someone like me on her team to help, in my opinion. But I picked this one up and I was like, might as well give it a try. And okay, this is like 75% match. 75 to 80 on like the best of times. Okay, so I will say the opening is not, is the most different. The opening is the most different because the cashmere is a lot stronger of a scent. It's, it's leans a lot more floral, even though it's very sweet and gourmand, it leans more floral. Whereas um, Taylor by Taylor Swift already starts out a bit more sparkly and lighter. But it, there was just one day when I'd been trying a lot of fragrances and the cashmere had already kind of hit its, its heart. It already warmed up on my skin and I had Taylor on another arm and I realized how similar they were once they really settle into the skin. Now, can you have both? and feel like they smell different enough to have both? Yes, and out of the three that I've talked previously and now this one, this is definitely, like I mentioned, the most different um, from one to the other. However, and they're both kind of like inexpensive anyways, so I would say it's not really like, oh, you should get one over the other because you're saving a lot or it's harder to find. They're both kind of relatively the same no matter what because they're, they're in the same range, really, especially if you're buying them online. But I would say that there is kind of a difference in maturity. So this is kind of like a younger, the young, like the young daughter version of this. And this is like the mom version of this or like older sister, younger sister. So if you know that someone likes a scent like this, then you know, it, like when they were younger and now they want something a little bit more older but kind of has that more vibe, this would be nice and vice versa. You know, if, the, if someone likes this and then you're trying to buy a gift for their daughter, I mean, you just, you can see what matches for your life. But I feel like they're similar enough where you would like one. If you like one, you kind of like the other, but that you can kind of deal with having both. And what I do also think is like somehow the combination of both, like if you were to layer them, reminds me of um, the Jessica Simpson white bottle, which now I'm forgetting. But this has like the sparkling nature of that. And it also has like the super sweetness of, of Casimir. So I really do like it. The opening is much more different than when it kind of settles into your skin. But once I realized how similar they were, it just made me like the Taylor fragrance more because that Casimir by Chopin just has such a special place in my heart that this in any way reminding me of that is kind of now weirdly nostalgic for me as well. So that is a great match as well. All right, and so the last one is one that I kept mentioning to you guys when I'd hauled one. I was like, this is reminding me of something. I need to talk about it. So the fragrances are Nirvana White and Stella by Stella. Now I've had Nirvana White for a longer time than I've had Stella by Stella, but I did kind of originally smell them around the same time. And it's interesting because these were fragrances that I'd smelled 
and sprayed for years in Sephora before purchasing. And I've had like every dry shampoo that Elizabeth and James have made, including the white one. So I'm just very familiar with their scents. And it took me a really long time to pick both bottles up, but I did eventually. And when I picked up Stella by Stella, I was like, I, it wasn't even a blind buy because I tried it, but I was like, oh my God, why does this remind me of a Elizabeth and James? And I'd never realized. So when I smelled all of them, I wasn't sure which one it was at first. I just knew it was one of theirs. And then I smelled them all and I was like, okay, it's white. So this is a very, very close match. Again, I would say 90 to 95. Yeah, they're really close. The one thing I will say is, and this like, if it's in any way helpful, this smells a little bit more, like if, the, if this is a 90% match, then this is a 95% match with the dry shampoo of this. Just cause this has like a slight airiness that you get from that dry shampoo. I don't even want to say powdery, but like a slight airy powderiness that you get from the dry shampoo that you don't get from this perfume but so so similar you guys so feminine such a clean floral um again now that i waited so long to pick this up so when i did knowing it wasn't a blind buy and realizing how similar they were i was a bit disappointed in myself for not just having you know saved that money and picked up something else they're both also 100 ml so essentially i have 200 milliliters of the same fragrance that I'm kind of getting over. And um, the good news is I've got a lot of friends who actually love this scent. So I have given out um, some decans and they, they will spray it as well. But th this is very, very similar. And the good thing I will say is that you can still find Stella by Stella a lot easier online. And sometimes because Nirvana fragrances have been discontinued, you can still get them sometimes and you'll get like a really good deal. But if you can't find one, go get yourself a Stella by Stella. They are so incredibly similar. They both have very, very near identical scents. Again, about 90 to 95. And in terms of lasting power, I feel like they're, they're more so on par than some of the others. They're pretty similar in that way as well. Maybe Stella's just like a step above, but recently my skin has just been eating perfume like crazy. It's mainly in like the spring and summer. I feel like fragrance will not last on me. So I've been emptying scents on me to just last through an hour. So it's kind of hard to tell right now, but in general, I would say the Stella is just like a tad stronger. So it's really about just which one you find. I would pick it up and I really would caution over getting both personally, even though I did do that because they are just way too similar in my opinion to have both in your collection. So I hope that was helpful for you guys. Please let me know in the comments below two things. Let me know if you want to see a part two, because I already have ideas for a part two. And if you also have any ideas of dupes that you've heard of because it was one of you guys that told me about the Blanche and Toy 2. So I'd love to hear from you guys. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye!